Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Permaculture is often described as an agricultural system centered around social design principles and food production. I have used some of the concepts from permaculture to build my garden and to help me develop the practices that I use. Central to my garden practices is the premise of permanent agriculture through the use of perennials and sustainable food production. A lot of the practices that I implement in my garden were inspired by the author of The One Straw Revolution and his Do Nothing Gardening method methodology, whereby one grows a lot of food using the least amount of effort while avoiding manufactured products. Many of you may have already seen and heard about this on my good friend Patrick's One Yard Revolution channel. Today I'm going to go through how I implement some of these principles in my garden and the work to research and test the methods and practices to see if science supports their use. I started gardening like a number of you. I wanted to grow organic, so I picked up a number of products and I followed methods similar to large scale agriculture. After a number of conversations with my parents, my grandparents, and finally the YouTube community, I was inspired to investigate sustainable growing techniques and interested to see if I could implement them here in my northern growing zone. As I began to investigate these principles, I liked that this method was more environmentally friendly while allowing me to produce more than I had previously. I started by adding perennials to my garden. This took a few years and some planning to maximize the use of the space I had dedicated to this. I took roughly equal shares between annuals, trial beds, and perennial beds. I have added 33 varieties of 12 different crops and continue to look for more perennials to add to my garden, including this rhubarb that my parents have brought from their patch in the Arctic. In order to maximize production while using the most sustainable techniques, I have organized my perennials by size and nutrient requirements. I have planted larger trees and shrubs like this apple tree outside of my garden area. Often with these larger trees, they'll extend roots one to two times the, the diameter of the tree itself, allowing it to search out different nutrients while not needing to compete with other food producing crops. If you are tight on space but would like a fruit tree or shrub, some can be grown in an espalier fashion or in pots like this dwarf grape. In the raised beds, I have planted my smaller plants, shrubs, and vines together. Their smaller size and growth habits have allowed me to place them much closer together. I have planted strawberries under my grapevines, goji bush, and blueberry bushes so that in a few years the entire square area of the garden bed is covered while taking advantage of the vertical space available in my garden. This method does come with some drawbacks. Because of the dense style of planting, there is much more competition for the available nutrients in the soil, and usually these plants have much smaller root systems than say my apple tree. I am less worried about achieving a slightly higher production per plant, rather a greater variety of crops and total harvests throughout the growing season. In order to assist and continue to get great production, we have started with soil that is nearing an excess of nutrient availability. Once the crops are planted, I will continue to add nutrients through the use of free and local resources. I originally filled these garden beds with nutrient-rich compost and worm castings. Thinking back to my previous methods, I would have then relied on organic products to feed the plants throughout the growing season. Through the ongoing work in the Testing Garden Assumptions series, I hypothesize that a healthy mulch made of used coffee grounds, autumn leaves, eggshells, and comfrey, among other free and local resources, will provide more than enough nutrients throughout the growing season. Additionally, the rates at which the nutrients are released are much slower, which helps prevent a number of problems. The use of a mulch layer to feed your plants is also a very sustainable method, as some of the materials are produced on site, while others are diverted from landfill. Using the principle of densely planted perennials with sustainable nutrient sources, I am able to produce food year after year with no cost input and the limited time required to spread a little bit of mulch from time to time. Around the time of the publishing of this video, Alberta Urban Garden will hit 10,000 subscribers. And for this, I am truly honored. And I wanted to thank each and every one of you for the time and support that you've given me. Without the likes, shares, subscriptions, and views that you've given me, I would not be able to do the work I do from the simple how-to videos right through to testing garden assumptions. Thank you very, very much. I really hope you have a fantastic day.